Howdy folks, hope you're all having a good one, and welcome back to World of Tanks with the Mighty Jingles. Now, I don't always feature World of Tanks, or World of Warships, or War Thunder for that matter, battles where everything's epic, where it's a last stand against insurmountable odds, and somehow the player, in this case Grey Shift in the British Tier 10 Tank Destroyer, the FV217 Badger, manages to secure a win that will be spoken of in hushed, reverential tones for generations to come. You just don't have those kind of battles every day. Often I'll pick a replay to showcase simply because it amused me, or something entertaining happened, or any kind of number of different reasons, other than it was an absolutely epic battle. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is not one of those battles. This one is absolutely epic. And it doesn't take long, <laughs> okay? You don't have to wait very long for the epic to start happening. Because this battle is going to go sideways very, very quickly. So, in the limited time before that all starts happening, let's have a quick chat about the FB217 Badger, the tank. That grey shift is driving. Well, it's a tank destroyer. It was a paper design, of course. It only ever existed in blueprints. It was a sort of tank destroyer what-if version of the Conqueror heavy tank. On paper, this thing looks like an absolute juggernaut from the front with 355 millimeters. I'm not making this up. 355 millimeters of front off. We'll come on the armor in a moment. For now, let's just have a quick chat about this amazing gun. Look at that. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I believe, at the time of writing, we are looking at the tank with the highest damage per minute in the game. With a typical equipment setup, this thing has more than 4,000 damage per minute on this 123mm gun. With a 7 second reload, 480 average damage, 272mm of penetration, 320mm of penetration with the APCR ammunition. He also has a loadout of Hesh, high explosive squash head, which is basically high explosive but with higher penetration. This thing takes no prisoners, and like its predecessor at tier 9, the Tortoise, it has amazing gun firing arms. As you can see, it demonstrated here. Oh, it's definitely time to fall back though. Flank is no longer secure. See, I like the French tank destroyers. The guns on those things are really, really good, but the firing arcs are terrible. You give a tank a bad, well, a tank destroyer, a bad firing arc with a long aiming time, and it basically means that if you're trying to shoot at a target that's moving left to right or right to left, you generally get one shot, and then you have to move the machine in order to keep the gun on target, and then go through the whole aiming cycle again. You don't get that issue with the Badger. You don't get that issue with the Tortoise at tier 9, is it? They both have exceptionally good firing arcs on those guns. And that ties into the armour as well, because the 355mm armour at the front of the Badger, on paper, sounds impressive, and it is impressive, but it only actually exists around the gun. The rest of the frontal armour is more like 210mm, which is still pretty good, and it is sloped back, but you can make more of it by angling the machine in a way that you just couldn't really do in something like a French tank destroyer, because then you wouldn't be able to point the gun at the target. You get no such problems like that in the Badger, and yes, the team have already lost five tanks. And they've only inflicted two casualties on the enemy, and things are going to get substantially worse. There goes another one before they start getting any better. Now, the extremely impressive frontal protection on this thing and the absurd damage per minute of this main gun do not come without some drawbacks. First, the side and rear armour on this thing is significantly worse than that of the Tortoise at Tier 9. And that, combined with below average mobility, means that the Badger is very vulnerable to being flanked. Also, while the frontal armour is god-tier in places and just pretty damn good elsewhere, the lower glacis is vulnerable. And even though the Badger does have a very impressive 10 degrees of gun depression, fighting on an elevated position like this does give enemy tanks a chance to hit that extremely vulnerable lower glacis. 
and if they have enough penetration, and they're not aiming directly around the gun, they can just go through the front of the hole. Oh, did I mention the accuracy? 0.3 dispersion. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if this is the most accurate gun in the game, but it's definitely in the top three. Oh, that BZ-51 down there is getting clapped into the middle of next week. I mean, I appreciate why he went down there. We thought he was going to try and spot targets for the guys up here, but they could see them all anyway. And all he managed to do was get himself killed. The there are now only five of them left, and they've only managed to kill four enemies. I told you this was all going to go sideways very, very quickly, didn't I? And I wasn't joking, and um, it's going to get worse. <laughs> yes. I mean, he's just managed to get a kill. Hooray. But the enemy team has two, so there's still six kills behind. With the enemy team having three times the amount of available health remaining two, and there goes another one. There's now one, three of them left. It's time to dig in, boys. There's only ten of them left against the three of us. Well, that was unfortunate. That was a pretty bad shot, actually. He's um, probably panicking a little. <laughs> Somewhat understandable. Oh, he's killed the Cobra. Nice. Now there's only nine of them against the three of you. And look at the position of... Because they're not all up here. There's Grey Shift and the IS-3 too, but look, the, the TVP is hiding down there in the trees. Overlooking the camp circle. <laughs> he must be shitting bricks right now. But he's doing all right. I mean, he managed to get a kill there without being spotted. Unfortunately, the IS-32 has gone for a cliff dive, and it doesn't seem to have worked out too well. And, yeah, he's dead, he's crashed, the TVP has been spotted, and he's getting clapped, and now, it is Grey Shift alone against seven enemies. He has 565 health left, they did have 6,000, a little bit less now, and here they come. And even with this 320mm of penetration, he's having to aim for weak spots at the top of the T110E5 in order to guarantee a penetration. But with 0.3 accuracy, it's not difficult to hit those weak spots, especially at this kind of range. And the fact that he is actually going for the weak spots tells us that he is not panicking. Right, he's... I mean, he's under a lot of pressure, but he's thinking, oh shit, the ship on. <laughs> Kill that thing. Definitely. Angle the armour. There we go. Nice. Weak spot eliminated. There goes the T110E5. He's clearly not in his comfort zone here, but he's not panicking. He's thinking about this. He's going for the most dangerous targets, like the FB4005, for example. That thing needed to die fast. And he's also prioritizing targets that he can kill, reducing the number of guns available shooting back at him. I know this sounds really obvious, but you'd be astonished. How many times you see people in this sort of situation and they just go for the tank that has the most health rather than finishing off the tanks that are on low health. Yeah, I'm gonna need this spot for actually further off. Oh, 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 hang on, hang on, hang on, wait for it, wait for it. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, shoot the tank that you can see. Oh, 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 oh crap. He's down to 130 health. Oh, the Bobjects just made a critical error. That's one less gun to shoot back. This guy's dangerous though. So he's got the armor angled up there. There we go. Perfect. Try to chase him down while he reloads. It's gonna take more than one shot though. That shot seems to go underneath the wreck. And he's got him. Took the return hit on his gun, which was lucky. <laughs> uh, burns the repair kit instantly, of course. Gets the gun and the tracks back up. 130 health. There he is. Gotcha. Cool, calm, collected. Still getting pelted by artillery, of course. But he's not going to remain spotted for long. Ducks back into cover. We know exactly where that T-92 is, of course. But there's a particular spot on this map that is always occupied by artillery. Oh, ratio. Careful, careful, careful. You don't want to crash. <laughs> because that would be really embarrassing. Grey Shift has just done ten and a half thousand damage and scored nine kills, and he even has nearly a thousand spotting damage. This was definitely one of those I'm not stuck on this hill with you lot, you're all stuck on this hill with me situations. 
but he's not out of the woods yet, because he only has 130 health left and he's facing two artillery. However, we did mention that we have a fairly good idea where that T-92 is going to be, because there is one spot on this map, and it's right up there, that is always occupied by artillery. And with the Hesh loaded, because it has 130 millimetres of penetration and does 620 average damage, more than enough to deal with artillery, go in fission. Now, you saw the explosions of the shells detonating there. So if you're shooting at an unspotted target and you do not see the shell impact, that means you hit. If you do see the shell explosion, that means you missed. So he knows that it is relatively safe to approach from this direction because Arnie isn't lying up on that corner in the bush there. Let's just make double sure. Yep, again, saw the explosion. Didn't hit anything. Well, didn't hit anything important. This is still going to be a bit of a butt clincher, however, because, well, there are some bushes at the back of the cat circle and trees. And while there's almost always somebody on top of that ridge, when artillery are digging in for a last stand, they do like to hide in those trees at the back. And they will see you before you see them. But the sixth sense isn't going off, which is encouraging. Now that could mean that they've buggered off to the other end of the map and they're trying to camp. And if they're both doing that, he's lost this game because he'll never get back in time to reset. But if they're not, he can win by camping or at least force them to come back try to stop it. So he's angling up in order to make the most of that gun traverse to cover both angles. And oh look, there's the T-92. Well it's a good job we got the hash loaded, isn't it? <laughs> and there's kill number 10. <laughs> and that, that just leaves the Geschutzwagen Tiger P, who now cannot win by capping and must come back or lose. And of course, Greshift only has 130 health left. So here's what he's going to do. He's going to get himself line of sight over there, and he's going to point the gun the other way, and yep, sure enough, there's the GW Tiger P, and he's stopping. He hasn't actually seen Grey Shift. Sixth Sense did not go off, but, well, the Tiger P clearly knew he'd been spotted, and, well, he was never going to beat this aiming time. And that is 11 kills, and 11,500 damage done, with 800 spotting damage for Grey Shift in the FV217 Badger. A full third of his team, five tanks, did no damage at all during the course of that battle. One of them, the Carnarvon, bless him, he's only tier eight, didn't even get to fire a shot before he died. <laughs> but Grey Shift was just, it's all right, boys, I've got this. <laughs> Congratulations, Grey Shift, on a thoroughly well-earned and extremely impressive result. Everybody else, I hope you enjoyed it. And as always, take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you next time.